Greetings, Silent Stacker here. In this video, we're going to be going through my local coin shop haul from April 27th, 2024. On that day, the spot price of gold was $2,297.70. Spot price of silver was $27.20. Got a lot to go over, so we'll get right into it. Uh, bought uh, two tubes of American Silver Eagles. These are both BU. Uh, this one was open, but as you can see, they are in very nice condition. Um, the Heraldic Eagle is always going to be my favorite reverse on these. Um, as you can see, these are 2014s. Got another tube here. These are 2019s, uh, Apnex Mint Direct. These are still sealed. So, I'm not going to open those. We'll just leave those sealed. Right, let's get into some of our generic silver rounds here. Got a couple of this design. Uh, 2010, E Pluribus Unum. Got Morgan design there. And this is Silvertown. Um, very nice design on those. I like those. And we've got a couple of this design. Uh, this was done by Liberty Mint. Uh, Liberty Mint was based out of Provo, Utah. Uh, they were in existence from 1984 to 1999. Blow there up so we can see that date down there. 1986 is what that is. Yeah, there you can see it good. 19, and like the way you can see on the tablet, July 4 there. But anyway, they're in business 84 to 89. They changed uh, names a few times, changed ownership a few times, and then finally went out of business. Uh, they only made this particular um, style of round in uh, 85 and 86. And these both are 1986 versions. Here we have a uh, World Trade Unit, uh, the International universal trade unit. Uh, I like that it's got grams on there as well as grains. Uh, this particular um, design here was uh, only done on Hoffman and Hoffman trade units. And they only made these, Hoffman only made these in 73 and 74. As you can see, this is a 1974 version. <laughs> Hoffman and Hoffman. They were around from the 70s into the early 80s. That was a neat design. And on this side, you can see we've got um, silver um, around the edge here in different languages. You got French, uh, German, um, that's going to be Italian, uh, pure silver, obviously English, Plata Pura, that's Spanish. And this is either Chinese or Japanese, uh, right here at the top. Yeah, very neat design. And then we got one of these, Southeast Refining. This is a fairly rare one. Had some nice toning on this one, so I picked this one up. This is called a Soaring Eagle design. Um, Southeast Refining was only in business for a couple years uh, let's see, according to my notes, 1980 to 1982, they were in business. And they only made a handful of different uh, bars and two different designs on the rounds, uh, this being one of them. But that was pretty cool. And then we have another trade unit here, the American Argent Mint Limited. World Trade Silver, one troy ounce, in God we trust. Uh, these guys were also out of Provo, Utah. Um, they were only in business from 82 to 84. And uh, they're, it's only known uh, of one round design that they actually made, and, and this is it. So there's really not a whole lot known about them, but they do know that they did make this one particular silver round. Other than that, um, Nobody knows of anything else that they made. Uh, got a couple of older Engelhard bars here, portrait style. It's an EMC version here. 
has kind of your standard repeating hallmark on the back. And uh, this particular design was made in 1981. They made roughly 400,000 of these. And got another Engelhard. This design was made in uh, 1986. Got your eagle and flag there. A little bit different uh, Engelhard. Uh, different back on these, I like that. Uh, these ones, they made about 300,000 of these. So I'm glad to have these both. I uh, got some more common stuff here. I got a stack of five of these Asahis. Uh, these are readily available. Nothing particularly special about these. Um, get into some of these. Let's do a few big ones here. Um, two ounces, big fat, chunky ones. Uh, the Awakening. It's a cool design. You can't wake a person who is pretending to be asleep. It's kind of some commentary on our current financial status in this country. And kind of a poking fun at Wall Street. Naked shorts. Derivatives. Pump and dump. Subprime. I like these fat uh, two ounce chunky rounds. I got three of those. I got two of this one. Um, it's Canadian. Four nines fine, another two ouncer, nice and fat. We got the queen on there. 2020. And of course, is uh, your Kraken. I like the little uh, privy mark there. Nice looking. Uh, back to some one ounce stuff. Got two of these. Mayflower. It's a nice looking uh, portrait of the Queen there. 2020 British Virgin Islands. And that uh, is a representation of the Mayflower. 1620 to 2020 anniversary. Got two of those. Some, somebody came in and dumped off a kookaburra collection at my dealer. It's a 2018. Yeah, they did nice work on these. Got 2018. Got 2003. Two thousand and one, nineteen ninety seven. Personally, I'm kind of fonder of this uh, older font, just looks more vintage. I guess at 27 years, we're kind of getting into that area. 1996.
And I do have a collection of kookaburras, but I don't pick them up very often because they're just really, I think, somewhat overpriced. And uh, it's 94. But again, these were all at uh, 28.50, so I absolutely took advantage of that to add to the collection. And what's the last one here? 1993. All right, so that's it for the kookaburras. some fractional stuff here got some grammars Donald Trump interesting thing about this one uh, when I went to look at the reverse it's the same reverse but a 90 degree die rotation so thought that was interesting so I added a total of nine grams so that was one had uh, seven of these Valcombis one gram each. And then this one I thought was pretty cool. This one comes with this little, uh, I guess what's supposed to be a strap of $100 bills, but it's a nice little design on that one there. Silver bullion, one gram. Got your buffalo design there. United States of America. Flying silver, 999, one gram. But yeah, well, that was a nice little package there. Um, this I actually didn't buy this week and I bought this a couple weeks ago and misplaced it but I thought I'd show it in this video one gram of palladium and we paid 85 bucks for that at one point um, it's a Velcombi get her up right for you yeah one gram of palladium 999.5 and uh, I paid uh, $32 on that one. That's my very first palladium. So I thought that was kind of cool. I'm only gonna pass that up. Um, got some fractional stuff here. Some half ounces. Morgan Design there. Uh, Golden State Mint. Here's another Golden State Mint design. I'm, I'm sure I have uh, at least one tube of these in the full one ounce version, but this is a real nice design. I really like that eagle design on the back there. And one thing I've noticed about the uh, Golden State Mint on their fractional stuff, they tend to, to make it larger in diameter than, than the other mints. Like for instance, this is their half ounce, and you know these are both the same size, you can see. They're both half ounce, but then when you get to your other mints, you can see they are significantly smaller, but they're thicker. And this is kind of the standard here. Um, Golden State's kind of an outlier in terms of the dimensions on their fractional stuff, but I'm not sure who does this one. It's just kind of your standard buffalo design. It's got no mint mark that I could find. Had a couple of those, and this one here was one I hadn't seen before. It's your Walking Liberty design, privately minted silver round, and on the back it's Money Metals Exchange, half troy ounce, nine 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 five, and of course we have the Saint Gaudens design, and it's a. Uh, Classic Silvertown, Winchester, Indiana. I like that. And then had a stack of five of these uh, tenth ounce. Again, privately minted, you can see there. Silver Round, Walking Liberty Design, Money Metals Exchange, once again. Now, generally speaking, I'm not gonna buy 
fractional stuff just because of the higher premium. But again, my dealer, he just sells it to me at the same price, $28.50 and out. So I'm more than happy to pick it up at that price. Um, this here was a spot deal. Um, paid $272 for this uh, older Johnson Matthew bar. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, you can tell some. We've got toning around the edges there. Serialized five six two two three four, and uh, paid uh, two hundred seventy two dollars on this one. Go right at spot. Everybody likes Johnson Matthew. Uh, had uh, this. Uh, paid three dollars on this uh, annex graded ms65 1955 s roosevelt dime and this was another one at 28.50 it came in a tip icons of inspiration that's uh, wilbur and orville wright And it's, uh, this was minted by the, uh, New. I had not seen that before. Thought that was pretty cool though. I wouldn't be surprised, I haven't looked, but I wouldn't be surprised if this is a, an Atmex deal. Got a little paper this week as well. Um, this was just a, Paid forty dollars for the stack. Don't normally buy them in this condition. I usually look for something better than this, but these were both here and they were pretty cheap. But the reason I got these is this is where we went from. As you can see, we got 1935G here on our series, and on this one is also 1935G. But on here. We have no motto above the one, and here we have in God we trust above the one. And generally speaking, on our paper, whenever we make a significant change uh, in the design, and that would be considered a significant change, um, we change the series. It would have gone from 35G to 1935H, but in this case, they didn't change the series. They just continued on with the same series and just randomly in the middle of the the uh, run uh, started adding in God we trust to it. So that was interesting. Um, some star notes. It's a 1957 star note. Again, nothing real spectacular about the condition on these, that's for sure, but it's hard to pass up star notes. One of these old silver certificates, that's a 57B. Nineteen thirty-five S or F, sorry. And one last nineteen thirty-five G star note. And this one here is a $5 silver certificate, 1953A. And except for this one corner right here, this was in nice, crisp and circulated condition. And then this Federal Reserve note from 1969A series. Uh, this one is in very clean, very crisp and circulated. So anyway, that stack was 40. A um, couple things at junk prices, which was uh, 20 times face on this particular day. So $10 on this uh, Franklin. And uh, $2 on this 1963 
waterproof dime. Got a couple things that melt here. Um, I don't know if you can tell where the toning on this one is crazy. And I'm not sure that that's natural toning or whether that's artificial, but these both came in from the same person I was told. And this one does have, you know, obviously natural looking toning on it. But they are 40%. Got toning front and back, and this one's got that same crazy toning on the back as well. Got blues and golds and greens in there. Um, yeah, there's your bicentennial. And both those up 40% at melt. This was a real nice Eisenhower, I thought. 1973, real good condition. So, I might even need that one for my book. But, great deal at melt. And let's uh, get into this, it's kind of different. Um, I got this at 26 bucks just because it was uh, damaged and all funky looking. So again, spot 2720 and he let me have it at 26 to throw into my melt. I'm going to eventually start melting and pouring. And speaking of which, he also had this that had come in. Obviously this is silver shot. 20 ounces worth, and I was not aware of this, but apparently when he goes to turn that into the refinery to have it melted, they deduct 5% off the spot uh, when they pay him. And since he really doesn't have any customers that are into buying that sort of stuff, he offered it me, to me at the 5% under spot uh, that the refinery was gonna give him, which brought it down to 25.85 an ounce. So couldn't say no to that either. Uh, got some gold. But these were cool. I always like these. These little grains. Got one grain, 24 karat gold. You can see it's stamped on there. One grain, 24 karat. American certified bullion. Four nines fine. Certified in the USA. And if you want, you can pause and read this here, but this here was what resonated with me. Now you own the real deal, not just a piece of paper. I think we know what they're talking about there. Yeah, what do we got here? I think we got a few of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got eight of those and uh, got all those at uh, Melt, which at a grain a piece is not a whole lot of money. And we have a one gram gold. It's a Noah's Ark from the Republic of Armenia. Very nice looking. And I became uh, curious when I saw the capsule that this was in. And I thought, well, man, that looks just like uh, Geiger capsules. And uh, looked it up, and sure enough, Geiger actually mints this stuff for Armenia. So, makes sense that they're using the same capsule. I do have these in uh, one ounce silver rounds. I, have, I think I have at least one tube of those. Got some more gold. 1986, 10th ounce gold, four nines fine. Uh, paid a 3%, uh, no, I take that back, 4% premium on this. Uh, where are my notes here? On the 10th ounce, I paid 240.
quarter ounce, again, 1986. Four nines fine. And on this, paid a three ounce premium, paid uh, 590 on that. And I guess I could mention on this, it was uh, $80 on that. This had a, I believe that was an eight, or like an 8% premium. And I got a couple of pre-33 gold pieces. Uh, Your Liberty Head, $5 gold piece. It's a 1900. Very nice detail. Not much wear to that one. And here we have an 1882. A little bit more wear on this one, but still not much. And still read everything just fine. Got all the lines in the shield just fine. And on those two uh, pre-33 gold, I got those for just at uh, gold value, so no, no premium at all on those. Uh, what did that come out to? Those $5 gold pieces were $565.59 on those. Yeah, let's see if there's anything else laying out here I haven't touched on. Uh, I don't believe so. So I think we've covered it all. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, I appreciate your time and thank you for watching.